just before we get started, just want to say if anything I'm saying in the video uh, doesn't make sense to you, or I'm talking too fast because I talk a lot, or you don't really agree with it, just shoot me an email if you have any questions, comments, concerns. These are just my views on uh, dosing in a reef tank. Maybe they're right, maybe they're wrong. I really don't know. I'm not a chemist. This just seems to uh, have worked for us, you know, try and keep things simple. We don't do anything magical over here. Yeah, so I just want to talk to you about dosing in a reef aquarium today. I'm not trying to change your minds if you're doing it a certain way or, or promote any brands, except I am because I love Salifrid and ESV. But besides that fact, yeah, I just want to show you guys how we do it over here and what seemed to uh, work for us up until now for the... Okay, I'm going to use the word salifert a lot in this video. I don't mean to be biased, but I really am because I love these test kits. They've been around for a long time. Uh, everybody I know uses them. We sell them. So I am highly biased towards salifert. And I just wanted to get that out of the way. And if you're going to test anything in your tank, I would really recommend going with these guys. You know, we use them in our own tanks, we sell them. And if we don't sell any of them, I don't really care because we're going to end up using them all anyways. I really like to sell stuff that, uh, that we use and that we can stand behind and we have experience with and that really gets the job done. So Salifert's one of those products that I, that I love to sell, I love to use, I love to talk about. And I really wouldn't recommend any other test kit on the market. I wanted to talk to you today about alkalinity. This one here in the middle. Um, we'll get into calcium and magnesium after. Maybe some people out there are interested in dosing in their tanks. And I feel like alk is the most important out of the three of them. When I come in here in the morning, first thing I do is grab that salad for test kit. And I test alkalinity. Why? So why are we dosing alkalinity in our reef aquariums? I'm not a chemist. I can't talk about the chemistry about it. I don't know about carbonates and bicarbonates and acids and specific alkalinity levels and all that fun stuff. Um, this is how I understand alkalinity. Whether it's right or wrong, it's worked for me for a long time. I think the corals here look pretty good. We need to maintain our alkalinity at a certain level. Corals essentially suck up alkalinity. They need alk in order to survive. I think about it, they suck it up almost like they do calcium. The more corals you have in the tank, the more alkalinity you have to add to the water because they're going to use it. They need it to grow, they need it to survive, and ultimately it plays a role as well in the color of the corals. More importantly, in uh, hard corals or SPS corals, I find that alk is pretty important for keeping a nice color. So if you don't have enough alkalinity, you're going to see the growth on the corals. It's going to drop off. If it gets too low, eventually they're going to die. If it gets too high, also, they're going to die. You know, sudden spikes or drops are going to affect the corals greatly. So we like to keep the alk here at 8, DKH, which is the uh, German measurement for uh, alkalinity. There are other ways you could describe it. That's just the one I'm used to using. It doesn't really matter what you use. But why 8? Uh, you can do 9, you can do 10, 11, 12, 7. It doesn't really matter what you keep your alk at. I find it's more important that it's consistent. You just don't want it to go up or down um, like a roller coaster. You want to keep it as stable as possible. And when you do that, that's when you're going to get the best results from your corals. With almost any of the things you're testing in this hobby, consistency is key. Your temperature, your pH, your calcium, your mag. If you can keep everything in check without going up and down, generally your corals are going to do well. Calcium also plays a pretty important role. We like to keep it around 440. Really anywhere between 420 and 450 is okay. Um, again, Salifert is my preferred test kit. I wouldn't really use anything else. And just like alkalinity, if there's no calcium in the water, if it's too low, it's not going to grow. But unlike alkalinity, if it gets too high, it's not going to start killing corals. It just precipitates out of the water. That's why I feel that alkalinity is a little bit more important because it's actually going to control whether your corals live or die. And so we add these two together. I like ESV. That's my favorite brand. There are a lot of different ones out there. It doesn't really matter what you use. Um, these guys are affordable. They've been doing it for a long time. Uh, it's consistent. Uh, it's really the only thing I would use or recommend, but it, you can use any brand essentially needed. But how do you know how much you should be adding to your tank? That's the million dollar question that everybody's always asking. And uh, yeah, I'm not here to toot our own horn, but I think the corals look pretty good. Um, it's just basic water changes, calcium, alkalinity, magnesium. I've always felt like less is more. The less you're putting in there, you know, the better off you're going to be at the end of the day. It's just what's worked for us. So I try and keep it simple. 
don't put more than you need and don't add stuff to the water that you're not that you're not able to test because it's really easy to uh, to overdo it anyways we got kind of sidetracked there main thing I'm trying to say is I test alkalinity every day I find it's the most important for growth for color uh, and then calcium and mag is also important mag kind of keeps these other two in check you know these two are kind of always fighting back and forth if calcium's high alkalinity is lower the other way around when you have your mag where it's supposed to be, which is around 1350 parts per million. We keep it at 1500, but you want to have 1350 minimum. It makes it easier to control these two numbers. Forget about dosing alk or calcium if your mag isn't in check. This is kind of the moderator, the uh, the, U, the UN between these two uh, fighting fighting chemicals. Here's our doser. The, the main takeaway message I wanted to give here is if you're going to dose, you need to test. And if you want to know how much to dose, go out, get a couple test kits and just start slow add five mils of calcium you know test your water okay let's say your water is at 400 it's a little bit low and you need to know how much you need to dose on your tank to get it right add five mils add five mils calcium five mils out come back the next day and test it and say okay what did five mils do for me okay maybe it did nothing maybe it raised it add another five mils now you're at 10 mils a day go back the next day test it okay what am i at now that i've added 10 mils maybe you find that your calcium went up five parts to 10 parts per million there's really no one size fits all here because everybody's tank is different. So get some good test kits. I really recommend Salifert. They're not that expensive. You get a lot of tests out of them. And that's the only way you're really going to figure out how much you need to be dosing. So test it for about a week. Every morning come in, go to your tank, whenever you find time, whatever, test it. And that way you'll figure out how much you need to be putting in. After a week you might figure out, okay, I put in 45 mils, maybe you overshoot. Maybe you find that you overshoot and you're a little bit high on the calcium after putting in however many milliliters. Then you can dial it back and then kind of figure out that way with the test kits how much your tank actually needs. Yeah, that's about all. I guess if you have any questions or comments, uh, you can check out the site, you can email us, you can comment below. Just don't, in my opinion, don't add stuff to the water that you're not testing for. It can just lead to unneeded, unfortunate consequences. These things are living. You know, we got to be careful with them. They are delicate. They're fragile animals at the end of the day. And we just want to keep them happy. And if you look at the corals, you know, generally they're going to tell you if they're happy or not. You know, after 10 plus years of doing this, I can, I can look at the corals and know, um, you know, if something's up with the water. So just pay attention to them. See what they have to say. They want to live, you know, and uh, happy reefing. Good luck. Thanks, guys.